Hello and uh, welcome to the next unit which is on types of chemical bonds. So what we're going to look at is, is wh what happens when atoms come together to create molecules uh, and how are they arranged? How are they put together in the molecule? What's the forces that are acting in there? Um, and those are going to start with what's called chemical bonds. So essentially we know that if we have something like carbon and it reacts with hydrogen that it's going to create something called methane. We know that there's four hydrogens around the central structure of methane. So we know that the structure is CH4 um, and we know that it's held together. It acts as a little group that acts as a little chunk of, of methane gas, uh, individual little particle. So what scientists did is they said, you know what, we're going to call these things or this force that's holding these atoms together, we're going to call these bonds. Now the bond itself isn't really there. We don't really see the chemical bond itself. What we just see in space is we see a carbon atom, a hydrogen atom in this position, a hydrogen atom up the top, a hydrogen atom actually like coming at us, and another hydrogen atom way back behind it. So you got this one that's going back far, you know, far away. You got one coming out at us, and you got two that seem to be in the same plane. I'll show you the shape of this a little bit later. Uh, for water, we would see that the water molecule of hydrogen and hydrogen has a bent shape to it. Okay, there's actually a bent shape to it. What we see is we see oxygen we can see hydrogen and we can see hydrogen. Why are they in this particular arrangement? Why is it that when we look at the water molecule that there's an angle between these hydrogen atoms? That's ultimately we're going to answer. Why is this happening as opposed to just in a straight line or you know why are they even bonding together at all? Okay so that's a chemical bond. Okay so when they share or transfer electrons. There's an energy that's here. So if I'm going to try to take out this hydrogen, if I'm going to try to remove it, I have to break that bond that's holding it together. So I'm going to have to sever this bond so that, that hydrogen atom can go free. Okay, that's that's a bond energy. That's how much energy is in that, 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 that hydrogen and oxygen keeping them stuck together. Okay, there's also something called the bond length. How close together are the hydrogen and the oxygen in the molecule? How close together are the hydrogen and the carbon? Okay, so there's a, there's a length. Now this is pretty good right here. You should probably know this that as the atoms come closer together, as the bond gets shorter and shorter, the bond energy goes up. So as bond strength goes up, the sh distance between the atoms inside the bond goes down. So, okay, so we're going to look at also something else called uh, multiple bonds in just a second. Okay, so bonds that have more electrons are going to be shorter, so therefore they're always going to be stronger. Okay, if we look at something like a bond between two nitrogen atoms, nitrogen bonds not just one way, but three ways. This is referred to as a triple bond and that's a very very strong bond okay so that would be a triple bond here's some energies or some some information don't write this down don't even bother recording this I'm just kinda of showing you here that these are the energies in our substances so we would have you know the bond energy of methane so to break that carbon hydrogen bond this is the amount of energy that it would have to add to do that okay and then for nitrogen carbon we can see 293 now notice down here we get to double bonds and triple bonds these are referred to as multiple bonds I'll show you this in the next slide but look at the energies compared I mean a triple bond with oxygen and carbon I mean thousand uh, you know kilojoules triple bond for nitrogen is about almost a thousand as well so we can see that double bonds and triple bonds and single bonds all have a certain amount of energy associated with them and over here this, this, this is just showing you the bond length so for single bonds, we have 1.54, 1.534, and for a triple bond, 1.20. So we can see, so this is just some data, okay? We can see by taking a look at, it, at that data that for single bonds, the bond length is longer than a triple bond, and therefore the energies are obviously the inverse. For a single bond that's longer, lower energy, triple bond, it's going to be stronger. So that's the relationship you should know. That as you go from a single, double, and triple bond, you get longer, shorter bonds, higher energies. Single bond is when we share two electrons. Double bond is when we share four electrons. And a triple bond is when we share six electrons. Just to make sure you're all on the same page here, what we're going to do is we're going to represent a bond with a line. And a single line means two electrons. A double line means four electrons. And a three electrons, or I'm sorry, three pairs or three lines equals six electrons. So each individual dash that we use in our structure is going to be considered the number of electrons that they share. So in water, that I showed you earlier, we have two electrons that are not being shared, but we are having we have four that are shared between the two hydrogens. 
So we have two single bonds in the water molecule sharing two electrons each. Uh, another example that would be carbon dioxide, I can draw that up here, would have two double bonds on either side of the carbon dioxide. Now for carbon, we're going to talk about these, these are called Lewis structures, we're going to get to drawing these a little bit later. Um, but for carbon, there's two double bonds on either side, so it would be two, four, six, eight electrons that carbon is sharing with each of the oxygens. Oxygen is sharing four electrons and has two electron pairs or four electrons that it is not sharing. Okay?